this morning, we have an amazing special guest for you. I think talking about a concept that I really am not hearing a lot of people talk about, and it's important to understand. So I want you to think big for a moment. Um, you know, people use the sort of term, a 30,000 foot view, right? Where you sort of zoom out from what you're looking at today and you zoom up higher and higher. Um, I want you to complete this prompt. When I look at the big picture of my life and business, the thing I need to remember that I want to do is blank. What's that big dream? What's that bigger picture look like? What's the legacy you're trying to build? What's the person you're really doing this for? What's your why? As I look at my life and business, I need to remember that the thing I want to do is blank. Look a ways out you know, take that future, start to paint it in writing so that you can pull it a little closer to yourself. All right, everybody, that's your morning mindset prompt. We now are going to be joined by an amazing special guest, someone who was referred to me by someone that I trust. And so with just that referral and not knowing this gentleman, I jumped on a call and within 30 minutes, we were scheduling our next call and our next call is just one of those experiences where because of his background and his experience and his enthusiasm and his vision for the future, I just wanted to get deeper into this conversation. He's He's got a commercial uh, practice. He brokers businesses, meaning he helps people buy and sell businesses. He's got a background in insurance and he's connected here to the EXP Realty family. My guy, Dan Janjigi. And Dan, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Good morning, Curtis. Thanks for having me on here. Honored to have you. So really, as I mentioned here in the intro, when you and I got connected, you just started talking to me about your world and the things that you see and the knowledge you have and what you're connected to. And what I, what immediately struck me, man, is it was one of those kinds of conversations where that wasn't a concept. You know, I was hearing a lot of people talk about regularly. And I, I supposed that a lot of our real estate entrepreneurs, maybe some of our EXP family and staff and people out there in the industry weren't exactly hearing and having this conversation. You started talking about an aging baby boomer population. You started talking about unprecedented wealth creation now and in the near future. You started talking about business brokering. You were taking me on these journeys, man, and I wanted to bring it to the family, bring it to the audience. So Dan, give us a little bit about yourself and, and tell us what you see that maybe we don't. Yeah, well, uh, well, first I'll share, uh, I, I love how you opened up your show and how you open up all your shows, right? I mean, the idea of mindset is such a huge thing. I'm a big fan of manifestation and and uh, and and speaking it into reality. And uh, yeah. I, I love the fact that that's your uh, your springboard. So uh, I just wanted to thank you for that. It's a great way to start off the show, and, and really proud to be a part of that. Uh, as far as my background, I uh, as you mentioned, I, I'm uh, on the business brokerage side. I work with uh, EXP through the commercial uh, division of EXP. Uh, work with some amazing people at at EXP um, uh, to kind of partner with them. And I think that's one of the great things that we get out of this organization is the ability yeah. to partner with other folks and work with them in a way where we all know that we're collaborating towards the same goals. Um, as far as uh, kind of my background before EXP, I was uh, in the uh, financial industry for about 20 years, uh, worked on that side of it. And during that time, did a lot of putting together um, my network. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I love super connecting people together that are great people and trying to put those deals together. And that's kind of what led me to realizing my passion, which was doing this full time. Uh, the, the transition from getting out of that. And, and it was it was a very lucrative market to be in and a very tough one to leave. But to leave that and get into this was really because that's where my passion lied. I, I wanted to be, you know, putting together some of these uh, deals where somebody that really wanted a specific kind of business would have the ability to get it. And, and, um, and somebody that owned a business who oftentimes they don't know what to do. It's not like selling a house where you've got, you know, lots of real estate agents that are out there that they can right. you know work with in business. That's not as often. Uh, you actually find that the majority of businesses that are out there in the U S uh, over 80% of businesses, you know, will do uh, under a million dollars in revenue and only 20% of those businesses will ever be sold. Wow. And that percentage gets bigger as the business gets bigger, right? If you're over a $30 million business, you're going to find that about one in three of those businesses will sell. Hmm. But oftentimes it's because the folks that have these smaller businesses, they don't even know that it's available to them. So True. their businesses will die on the vine. So that's, that's really what kind of attracted me into the business to start with. Man, that, that's crazy to think about. Like when you were telling me that, I honestly went back and did a little soul searching because it, it hit, home, hit home for me. So my dad been in the oil and gas industry for almost 40 years and oil and gas has kind of gone like this over the many decades and most recently you know probably almost 10 years ago now 
um, oil and gas was nearing the tail end of a boom and it was starting to slow down. And my dad had had this company and I had actually been helping him grow it. And when it slowed down all the way, Dan, he really just kind of closed it down. He like shut the business down, liquidated all his equipment. And the moment you told me that story about like helping these small business owners understand that there's a future, right? It, it, it struck me similar to like helping people who never believed they could own a home, get into a home or, you know, helping people realize a dream, like the idea of brokering businesses and helping people um, very connected, you know, and just a, a subject again, that I knew nothing about. And I wondered if our audience should get connected to this, because I would imagine that a lot of the, you know, homeowners may even own a business, right? And you specifically told me about the the aging population of business owners and baby boomers and wealth creation. It's just fascinating, man. So so what do you see in sort of your crystal ball of the upcoming, you know, transition of generational transition, the business transition, you know, the wealth creation? What's what's the future look like? Well, we're gonna see more uh, value change hands over the next uh, three to five years than we've seen in probably the last 50. Wow. And the reason is because you've got all these folks that are baby boomers that are going through this retirement process now, right? They're in their late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. They're, you know, they, they've done fine. They do well. A lot of their businesses are very cash flow positive. It's, you know, what they've used to raise their families and whatnot. But now the kids don't want the business, right? They're, mm. uh, what do I do? And a lot of these folks are just going to let those businesses die in the vine. And looking at the numbers right now, we're looking at just over the next three years, there's about 12 million baby boomers that will fall in that category that actually own businesses that are, are literally ready to retire and, and kind of hang it up. And oh my gosh. they don't need the money, right? In most cases they look and they're like, okay, I've made my money. I've done well. Um, but they don't realize that if they were to sell that business, that's cash flow positive. There's a great young entrepreneur out there that's ready to buy it. It's a lot safer investment than them going out and building from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, they've got a book of business, they've got employees in place, they've got cash flow. It's funny hearing you talk about your dad. My dad is in that same boat. He's had a, he had a restaurant for 40 years mm. that he uh, ended up, you know, letting go eight years ago. And it just was like, wow. I mean, you know, he just didn't think anybody else could do what he did. And we could get into all the intricacies of why that's absolutely not true. But, yeah. you know, the reality is that, you know, this is a very, very common thing. I always ask people too. I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be in front of a group of folks speaking and I'll say, hey, how many of you guys know somebody that owns a business and everybody raises their hands, right? Yep. Then you'll ask, well, how many of you guys know somebody that sold a business and you'll lose about 20%. So about 80% of those people know somebody that's actually owned and maybe they sold a business or, or whatever. And then I'll ask, well, how many of you guys have actually been part of that transaction, made any money, you know, helping that person make that transition and you get no hands. Yeah. And this is where it's different. You know, in our, in our market, we've got a ton of real estate agents, We've got a much smaller amount of commercial agents. And then we've got a really tiny segment of people that do business brokerage. And most of those even are, are people that do commercial. So finding the right person that you can work with that's going to help a business owner transition is a huge value, not just to that agent, but it's also a huge value to the person that they're giving that, that opportunity to. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine, man. This is really, like I said, this is one of those concepts, I think, when you hear that this is a reality hopefully for all of you, like some light is coming on, right? And maybe if you were doing your mindset prompt at the beginning, maybe you had a, a vision for greater impact. Maybe you had a vision for, uh, you know, more financial stability or maybe financial freedom, or maybe someone came up for you in your mind, right? That you can relate to the stories that Dan and I are sharing here. You know, I, I just thought that this was one of those concepts, Dan, that we really need to keep or, or begin talking about more across the connected industries, right? So you you mentioned that sort of small small group of of business um, of business brokers and business brokering, and then the commercial agent count, and then the residential agent count. And so most of the people probably watching or listening to this somewhere fall into that space in general. Um, you know, I don't want to get too into the how to on this show, but I just think it's important to give people a little bit of guidance. So if if someone's eyes just opened and or their ears just like perked up, and this sounds really interesting. In your experience, what um, what can people start to do or start to talk about? You know, maybe those people whose hands were, yeah, I know someone who owns a business. As you know, people who add value for a living, what value could we start to add? What kinds of people do we need to think about connecting these business owners to? Give us a little bit of the thirty thousand foot view of how we can make a difference. Yeah, well, 
you know, it's interesting. I, you know, like I said, I was in insurance for years and I sold supplemental insurance, which is kind of like Aflac. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring this up is because, you know, I would sit down with the client and I think to myself, my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting with them, which is, you know, for most of us in the sales side is the, the hardest thing. That's to the do, game. Yeah. Right. That's the game. So now that I'm sitting with them, I mean, why can't I be offering them home and auto and, you know, all these other things that that obviously they need, you know, they're 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 things that these people are going to have to purchase. Yeah. But I just had this kind of small thing that I offered. And, you know, when I work within my industry and, and I know business brokers in general, you know, we work with a lot of real estate agents, CFPs, you know, things like that, because they're sitting down with those same kind of conversations and they're working with folks that own businesses. Maybe that business needs to be valued, which is something that we do. We let them know what their current market value is. You know, maybe they're looking to buy a new business or sell a new business. And if they, you know, especially with folks here at eXp, if they were to work with a business broker in that kind of respect, you know, they could expect to see somewhere around the lines of about 20% of the fees that are collected by that broker as far as income that they could make from just making that referral. Wow. You know, and, and, you know, and again, we've got a great division here. A lot of folks don't even know we have business brokers at, at True. Yep. So there's a lot of great EXP business brokers that they can work with. And, and because EXP is such a phenomenal portability rule, we can work pretty much nationwide. So finding that right person that you want to partner with can really open up these new streams of income for you. And yep. it really brings value to the clients you're already working for. So you're just, you're just giving them something more uh, yep. for their relationship with you. So that makes me feel like number one, I got to do a quick disclaimer. Like we're not talking about income guarantees here, anyone or anything. Sure. Um, no, no promises associated with this brainstorm. But you know, I'm, I'm just curious because you know the average realtor here in our ecosystem probably sells homes in like the three hundred to three three hundred fifty thousand dollar price range, and right. there is no set commission in our industry. But you might make on average, you know, two to three percent on that as a one as an agent on one side of that transaction. So everybody can kind of do the math. If you were to give us like a, an average, Dan, you know, just so people can have the seed of financial possibility in your industry, what we're talking, you mentioned an agent that maybe referred a deal out that ended up closing. What, what does that 20% possibly translate to in range? You know, are we talking about a drop in a bucket? Or are we talking about sort of a, maybe a, a big, a business augmenting or, or major impact um, in terms of the amount of, you know, commissions? Yeah, it can be it can be pretty major. I'm I'm working on a deal right now that's about a four million dollar deal, and like you said, you know, commissions are obviously you know that you you negotiate those and work mm -hmm. those out. But um, you know, like on a deal like that, you're looking at about a uh, twenty to twenty five thousand dollar commission wow. uh, just for being the refer. And you know, wow. like last last deal we closed was substantially smaller. It's about a, a million and a half, about a one point six million dollar deal. Yeah. And you know, the commissions on that were closer to about sixteen thousand dollars. But again, those are pretty substantial because in that case, it was just literally a phone number and name. That was that was the involvement by the referrer at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty nice check to be able to write. Wow. No, that's crazy. And, you know, I wish we could go deeper here, everybody. So I'm going to ask you all real quick just to kind of get a little bit of feedback. And I already know what my personal answer is. Um, would anybody out there, if you're sitting here listening to Dan today, would anybody be interested in learning a little bit more from Dan where we went a little deeper? Because if you're doing some quick math in your head and adding $20,000 a year to your business would be great. What if you did three or four times that because you were asking just the one powerful question you needed to ask when you're already sitting down with that prospective buyer or seller? Um, give me a yes in the chat box or let me know in the comments if you want a little bit more. And then I'll put Dan on the spot. You know, Dan, are you down to record, you know, when we finish the live show a little bit more and talk in more detail and depth about this process and give people maybe through the EXP's YouTube channel some more information about business brokering and how to do these referrals and all that? Absolutely. I, I think it's one of the most exciting things out there. It is. I, when, after I met you, man, I went home and told my dad. I called a buddy. I, I, I messaged a friend. I told my wife, like, there are other ways we could be helping people in a major way. And we all know, right, that you all, you get what you want by helping other people get what they want. And if there are really, and I don't doubt your statistics, like there are really people near the brink of retirement that are going to let the plumbing business close down, or they're going to let the restaurant you love close down because they don't have a family member to transition it to, or, or their child doesn't want it. Like what a tremendous opportunity to think a little bigger, you know, than just your worldview and expand a who you're able to help b how you're able to help and maybe see your personal vision you know for your legacy and your impact and you know that's where i want to go next man because 
I think what you do and how you've done it and your approach over a couple of decades and even still the way you operate, knowing a little bit about each of the things you play in represents a, a very uh, big vision, a little bit larger life, Dan, than the average entrepreneur, I think, is targeting. And so I was listening to a podcast by Ed Milet, and he had on this author named Benjamin Hardy. And Benjamin... Dan is the author of a book recently. It's, it's a psychological principle. He's a psychologist, but it's about 10 xing your life or 10 xing anything is actually easier than 2 xing. And he says psychologically, the reason why is because when you think bigger and you decide to go 10 times as large, the first thing that feels like is an impossible goal. It feels impossible to make 10 times the amount of money you have or spend 10 times the amount of time you spend traveling or with your family seems impossible. And two times seems so natural. It's very linear, like, oh, I can make two times as much money if I just keep working harder in the next five years. And I, I could spend a couple hours a day with my kids if I rearrange some things and did right. Two times is really practical. 10 times sounds impossible, but here's the problem with practicality. Um, when, you, when you're just going in that linear fashion, your body, your mind, everything's a bit on autopilot. So you don't change very much. You change very little because you know really that it's attainable if you kind of just keep doing what you're doing. But if you switch to the 10X mentality, Dan, I think like you, and you have this bigger vision for this impossible life, goals, dreams, and impact, you actually do almost everything different because you have to. You figure out like a different way and you start to force yourself to become different and you start to pull this like big dream that's in the future more into the present. So if you had to sort of, you know, react to that for me, are you in the big dream mode? Are you in the 2X mode? And do you find any truth to that sort of psychological principle? I'm 100% in the, uh, in the 10X mode. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm a manifester and I don't, I don't manifest small. I always try to manifest large, whether it's within relationships with, a, you know, it's my relationship with my kids or, or whatever it may be. And definitely yeah. within business. I mean, there's no point in just doing things sort of, or, I mean, doubling for most people would be phenomenal. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I, when I, I'm a big Grant Cardone fan. I know uh, obviously his wife's part of our organization as well. And, and 10 X is what it's all about. So yeah, it, it, anything we can do to blow this up, I think is, is great. Yeah. It, it opens up so many doors. So what do you, what do you find as you're taking that approach? You know, I, I like it, when I, when I talk to you and I don't know if any of you all can relate to this, like someone might ask you what you're up to. And if you're the person who has like four things that you're up to, or you've got like these different pathways that don't sound normal, natural, you right. might be on that 10 X vision plan, right? Like if you're the person who's like, oh, I'm doing the same thing and I'm doing what I was doing last year and I'm just doing a little bit more of it, then, you know, not being critical of you doubling is fantastic. Like Dan said, but that's kind of an indicator that you're probably not in that mode. So when you're in that mode, Dan, what does like your reality look like? Are you doing multiple things at once? How do you stay balanced and prioritized and focused? Are you finding that you're sort of changing, you know, month to month, quarter to quarter? What's it like? Yeah, I, you know, for me, I find that if I stay in my lane, if I really focus on what I'm doing, uh, I try not to do too many things outside of that, right? Love so, it. you know, for example, I've, uh, you know, my particular company, I partner with an EXP residential agent. I partner mm -hmm. with an EXP commercial agent. Now, obviously, residential is kind of more local. And, and even though I'm licensed, uh, I like to do that partnership because it allows me to really focus on what I'm good at and what I'm trying to grow. And then I, it also lets me focus on my business. Instead of being in the business all the time, I can work on it. Yeah. So I'm doing a lot now. I'm learning from uh, some of the best within the market, which also includes the XP. I'm working with uh, Michael Reese, for example, and his group uh, on doing funnels and really learning how to expand my business so I can, I can see a whole lot more yeah. uh, possibility coming in while I'm kind of doing this. And everything I'm doing is just kind of like, you know, based around that because the market right now, people talk about it and I hear them talk about the residential market and how it's hurting and interest rates is killing us and you know all these things and you know you have residential uh real estate investors that are saying they're not getting the same kind of returns they used to get i, I can sit down with them and i can show them that they can make eight to ten x the returns that they would have normally seen in the residential market by working here so hmm. where i think a lot of people might be struggling we are absolutely thriving and it's just this this market could not be better for us so it's, it's really excited to get people along and, and bring them with us, which is uh, really fun. I love that. Well, it goes back to what you said at the beginning of just kind of coming on here. It absolutely starts with your mindset, right? If you're 
belief is that this is a great time and a great opportunity and there's tremendous leverage and there's people, there are people in need and there are people that know how and you seek them out, then you're going to find what you're looking for. And, and if you're not, then you're not, you know? And so I love that, man. And it sounds like, again, um, the stuff you're doing today probably isn't the stuff you were doing six months ago, 12 months ago. You're, oh, no. you're learning new things. So in this future market, you know, we'll kind of end with a little skill talk here. You know, in the future state that you see, whether it's business brokering or, you know, more connection and adding value around your relationships, what do you think are a couple of the top skills that people should be assessing, Dan, with sort of where they're at now and and wanting to like skill up or get better in? So, you know, I think, you know, I think it all comes down to the basic idea of sales. I've always based everything I've done based around kind of the cycle of sales yep. and, you know, it's one thing to learn the you know, real basics, right? Establishing a core and, and learning to be really great as far as networking, because everything we do, all of our growth should be based around referrals and growing and building rapport and connecting with other people. Um, but I think it goes beyond that. I think once you've got that rapport established and you've built those relationships, you also have to learn how to be kind of pleasantly persistent. And you need to learn how to close people in every aspect of the sale um, quicker than we normally do. I'll give, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I tell people in, in any transaction, there's always going to be three sales that actually happen. The first one is the sale for the appointment, right? Whether I'm sitting down with a potential real estate agent or a, a prospect, you know, or, or if I'm selling any kind of a product, I want to create an appointment, whether it's right there on the spot or in the future. Yep. And I want to make sure those people show up and that they're actually there because I don't want to be, you know, spending my time trying to follow up and becoming a professional appointment setter. Right. The second part is the actual sale of the product. Maybe I'm trying to get them to sign an engagement agreement. Maybe I'm trying to get them to buy you know, whatever widget I've got. And the third one is the actual uh, gathering of referrals. You know, when you go out and get referrals, it shouldn't be an afterthought, you know, as you're building your business again, whether it's real estate and trying to figure out, you know, maybe they've got, uh, they got uh, moved from California to Texas. Right. Yep. So there's other people that are being moved as well. Well, how do I get set up with the person at the company that's, that's coordinating that? How do I get set up with people that you work with on your team that are going to be moving here as well? So I can gain that business. That sale is such a key component uh, of everything because it leads to the first sale again, right? Yeah. Calling that person, setting up a new appointment, and then getting them through the process. So I think yeah. that's probably the biggest thing I could I could recommend from that side. I love it, uh, Dan. Do you do much on social? Is there ways people can find you or follow you? I know you've written a book before as well, right? How can people get a little more Dan in their life? Oh well, yeah, I'm 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 ashamed to say that my social media stinks. So okay. I am no I am going through at 51 years old right now. I am learning social media, uh, so I can get better at it. We've got some videos up for our business, which is Gridiron Business Group. Uh, they it. can check us out if they want more information about what we do. We have uh, cool. gridironbg.com, which is great. And perfect. like you said, I've got, I've got the book on selling, which, we, uh, which we've been really excited about uh, having out there. But um, yeah, if anybody ever wants to contact me, they're free to reach out to me through EXP. Um, Daniel Jigan at expcommercial.com. I appreciate you, man. I love it. Do you use work chat yet? EXP's work chat? Of course. Features. Yeah. Of All right. Course. So send, send down a work chat. And then you heard earlier, we got the commitment to do some additional YouTube videos. So we'll do a little bit more conversation around business brokering. And we'll talk a little bit more about the opportunity and maybe what it looks like for you out there. Number one, if you uncover a business that needs help, um, how to make a referral. Number two, if you're a commercial practitioner or a, a dabbler in business brokering, we'll do a little bit of what you need to do right now. And then if you're a pro out there that happen to catch this and listen to this and you want to partner up with Dan, you think a little bigger, you're expanding. Uh, we'll make sure you can get connected there as well. So Dan, we're going to take a quick moment here just to give everybody a heads up. We're just a minute away from uh, kicking off or transitioning to our big agent meeting, but we are going to drop a link to a survey here in the chat box. It's very important to us that we get your feedback every single week. We want to know if this show added value, what we can do better or different, and if not, why. So please take just a 15 seconds to open that on your computer, fill that out for us, and any comments, words of encouragement, wisdom, gratitude you want to pass on to Dan, share it with us, and we will do it Dan, we've got to get out of here in just a moment and get everybody ready for the big agent meeting, but we're going to get those YouTube videos recorded and then we'll drop them on EXP Realty's YouTube channel. Sound like a plan? Sounds great. Thanks for having me on today. Absolutely, man. This is an absolute blast. Everybody, again, Dan Janjigian, find him on the web, work, chat him if you want to know more. As always, we'll end where we started. If you're just catching the tail end, you caught 
the tail end of Connected. We call this a safe space to embrace your power. We're joined by the powerful Dan Janjigian, a, a rock star entrepreneur doing so many unique things that I think I hadn't heard much about and I hope you found very helpful today.